Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And who's with us? Me, Fifi. Fifi's back. <laughs> You've come for a special movie today. It's here on Horror Palooza. What's playing, Fifi? We're going to watch the director's cut of Alien. Yes. <laughs> I've been so excited about this for you. This is your first time watching. Yeah. I've never seen this before, but I've always heard good things about it. My best friend was like, you've never seen this before. But yeah. Well, it shouldn't scare you too much. So it's, <laughs> no, not, right. it's not that kind of movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go watch it. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. <laughs> here right now, Fifi. Mm -hmm. That's li literally called the space whale. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The stroma. Back in the day when they actually had to build these things. Right? I miss those days. Those old school computer screens. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Fifi, the first half of this movie, uh, it burns slow. Mm-hmm. But the second half is bonkers. I am enjoying the like the set design though. It oh, sir! So amazing, like little babies. <laughs> <laughs> All got their diapers on and everything. <laughs> See the guy to the right that still hasn't woken up. Mm -hmm. You know who that is? That's Ian Holm. Ian Holm. You might better know him as Bilbo Baggins from oh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, are you for real? Yep. Oh my god. Where's the cat this whole time? In his own little pod with his own little space diaper on. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, his mother wants to talk to you. Uh, small version of Cerebro. Mm. This was as good as AI got back then, so. <laughs> Where's Earth? You should know. It's not our system. How are we Control doing that here? They're off course. Mother's interrupted the course of our journey. Seems she has intercepted a transmission of unknown origin. She got us up to check it out. Not our problem. Because it's not my contract to do this kind of duty. Any systematized transmission indicating a possible intelligent origin must be investigated. Penalty of total forfeiture of shares. Is money. Wow, what a crock of shit. <laughs> they need a union. They did need a union. <laughs> they went, even space went right to work. <laughs> Doesn't sound like any radio signal I've heard. It's a planetoid. What about gravity? 0.86. You can walk on it. Shouldn't we at least get a boat? It's in the contract, man. It's stuck. Yeah. Money ain't everything, I'm just saying. <laughs> These guys are just space truckers. Right. They're just hauling shit what their back. Are like. <laughs> You're right. Stay out here, get some money. You don't know. Maybe this is they're like the breadwinner of their family and they need that money or something. It's true. Gonna land? Oh yeah. I feel like it's so um Well come on, Fifi, we got money to think about okay. here. <laughs> we don't know what the conditions are like on this planet. Like, but we don't know what their family situation is like back home, Fifi. <laughs> <laughs> we do need a union. <laughs> this is terrible. Are those Christmas lights on the bottom? Yes. <laughs> yes, those are their floodlights. Yeah. <laughs> Just the moment. Really violent for that blow. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why is this so bad? Because they don't have a union protecting them and giving them safety protocols. This is like the spirit. <laughs> How far away from the source of transmission? Just under 2,000 meters. Can you give me an atmospheric? There's in a nitrogen high concentration of carbon dioxide crystals, methane. No, just like home. Yes. I'll volunteer to be in the first group to go out. You too, Lambert. Well. Oh, enthusiasm for this job. <laughs> Jogging, please. That's as much exploring as he's going to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice together. <laughs> All those carbon dioxide crystals blowing like, around like that. If they find what they're looking for out there, does that mean we get bullshit? Don't worry, Parker. You'll get whatever's coming to you. What? Why don't you just fuck off? What? <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's a structure, all right. Oh, yeah. 
Let's get out of here. We've got this far, we must go on. Famous last words. <laughs> Beefy, welcome to the artistic world of H.R. Giger. Mm. This is what his design looks like. Looks slippery. It is. <laughs> it's an H.R. nightmare. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> it's a giant skeleton. Kind of looks like a cockroach to me. Bones have been out with. They exploded from inside. Is that like a weird metal? Oh, they are looking at a life form. Dang, that's crazy. What do you got? Let's see what you make of this. Ash, that transmission. Mother's deciphered part of it. It doesn't look like an SOS. What is it then? Well, I, it looks like a warning. <laughs> Why did they wait until it had finished deciphering? You know what I think it was? They didn't want to be out here any longer than they had to, so they just went. Probably. A, ca a cave of some sort. What the hell is this? It's a big structure. This place is massive. It's full of leathery objects, like eggs or something. Like yep. eggs? Well, that's all I needed to see. I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> a layer of mist reacts when broken. Oh, no! <laughs> that was so funny because he fell kind of slowly. Ew! I would have been like, nope, okay, I'm out now. <laughs> no! <laughs> Sir! Seems to have life. That can't be good. Ew. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if he had the helmet thing to protect his face. Absolutely, he's fine. <laughs> let us in. What happened to Kane? Something has attached itself to him. If we let it in, the ship could be infected. You know the quarantine procedure. Could you open the goddamn hatch? No. I can't do that. Don't y'all remember COVID? <laughs> yes. I read you. The answer is negative. Yeah. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. It's holding on too. She made the right call. She did make the right call. You did a job. Flip it. That other dude yeah, undermined yeah, her. Like a crab and a spider at the same time. And it like yeah. triggers me like so much. They don't know what they're doing. They're like, what are they, miners? Mi miners? They're, they're truckers. They're just space truckers. Yeah. They're like all they do is carry ore from one place to another. Yeah. They're not like scientists. They're not even doctors. What's it got down his throat? I would suggest it's feeding him oxygen. If we remove it, it could kill him. I won't even take that chance. Let's cut it off from now. Look at this. It's a city. That crap's gonna eat through the hole. Yeah. Next deck. That's the thing he has to do. Don't get in here on your arm. Stopped. It's got a wonderful defense mechanism. You don't dare kill it. Can you imagine creatures like that, Fifi? They're already scary like that, but now you try to kill them, they have blood for acid for blood. This is a funny habit of shedding his cells and replacing them with polarized silicon, which gives him a prolonged resistance to adverse environmental conditions. It's a survivor. Oh, yeah. And you let him in. You know, his only chance of survival was to get him in here. By uh, breaking quarantine, you risk everybody's life. It was a risk I was willing to take. You do your job, you let me do mine. Yes. Okay. Is that how you talk okay. to the senior officer? Okay. Yeah, Les? I think you should have a look at Kane. Something's happened. Serious? Interesting. Interesting can't be good. Where is it? Well, I don't know. That's so <laughs> Um, I'm just like, bro, y'all are so dumb. I'm sorry. I know they're, they're like, dumb. No, they, this is dumb. That's the bane of a lot of these movies is bad decisions. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> Kane? Oh. <Yeah. laughs> you okay? Cover it with a damn thing, will you? That's fine. 
<laughs> Dead enough. Well, good. Let's get rid of it. God's sake, this is the first time that we've encountered a species like this. It has to go back. Dumbass, it has to go back. Jim says I was such a decision ish. Scientifically significant. I'm not good with this answer. <laughs> Anything that has to do with the science division, Ash has the final word. Since when is that standard procedure? Standard procedure is to do what the hell they tell you to do. I think that's a good idea. Look, I just want to get the hell out of here, all right? Can we at least throw the trash out first? The alien? Specifically the alien, yeah. What they should be do doing is putting it in like a specialized, like... What they should be doing is throwing thing. it out. <laughs> I mean, obviously it is a scientific discovery, so I'm sure the company wants them to bring it back for, like, further research. Or to let the actual scientists do right, the work. Right, like, yeah. yeah, let the actual scientists do the work. Don't let that guy start dissecting it. Just give me the short version. How far to Earth? Ten minutes. Oh, God. Dallas, I think you should come and see Kane. We're on our way. <laughs> <laughs> we are alive. What's the last thing you do in here? I remember some horrible dream about... Smothering it. Gotta have something to eat before we go back to the store. I need something to eat. No, everything's fine. I don't want to talk about what it's made of. I'm eating it. The food ain't that bad, baby. Hey, what's the matter? need be said about that <laughs> what do you say after that they didn't give him a physical afterwards or anything an x-ray uh... they gave him some water <laughs> <laughs> god what a terrible way to go and now it's just loose on the ship yeah yay <laughs> aerial in space this is just an ordinary prod like a cattle prod don't they have, like, weapons? No. <laughs> they don't have weapons? They have whatever they can make. Oh, they are picking up movement. At least they're in a group. I sure wouldn't go after that thing alone. <laughs> All right, now. Wait, don't let him go! Oh, no. It's the cat. Oh, you gotta go catch the cat. <laughs> Had to back it, man. I'll, I'll, I'll go, go and get it. So let's split up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that's a good idea. Hey, kitty. Jones. That cat is gone. It shedded. It's been loose for two hours. Look how much it shed. <laughs> you should get back to the others. Don't worry about the cat. No. What water is this? There it is. Swinging back and forth. I didn't see it. <laughs> That's the whole point. It doesn't want you to see it. I would have died. I wouldn't have seen it. Come on, baby. Is that the... So he grew up that much? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's an eight-foot beast now. <laughs> Never said a chance. You're getting rained on with blood now. Well, while you're here, you may as well grab the cat. Even the cat looks traumatized. Whatever it was, it was... It was banging. Could you walk the line? Could Brett be alive? No. Would you? It's like, no. <laughs> Why would you think that? <laughs> Drive it into the airlock and zap it into outer space. Parker, can you rig uh, three or four incinerator units? See, that's what I mean. They can only so do what they can build, you know? I doubt this ship is meant to heat up all that much. I mean... In reality, that would probably cause problems. <laughs> So, who volunteers to go into the air duct after this thing? Hmm. Oh, it was the captain's mistake doing this mess. So yeah, he gets to yeah. clean it up. Ripley. Yes. 
close all the hatches behind me. I'm moving on. You're going to be cut off, man. You won't be able to get out of there. But I like how he did it. <laughs> she kind of pissed at him right now. <laughs> I don't blame her. Somewhere around the third junction. Good job, Parker. That's effective. Dallas, you're gonna have to hold your position for a minute. I I'm off the signal. You sure? But look around. Are you sure that it's not there? Yeah. Uh -oh. That's blue, Loogie. I might I might play around, but I want to get the hell out of here. Oh, God. It's moving right Back up where you came from. Go. Uh, take your time. <laughs> Move. Get out of there. Didn't know where it's coming from. <laughs> I could tell you. She's panicking, too. Yeah. <laughs> he was really patient about it, too. He was just, like, chilling in there. Yeah. <laughs> you found this lane there. I say that we abandon the ship. We get the shuttle and just get the hell out of here. The shuttle won't take aboard. Well, then why don't we trust brother? I'm not going in these drawers. I'm for killing that goddamn thing right now. Yeah, you don't have a whole lot of options out here. Any suggestions from you or mother? No, we're still collecting. I find that hard to believe. So what would you like me to do? Just what you've been doing, Ash. Nothing. I say we leave him on the ship. <laughs> I second that call, Fifi. I guess the shuttle doesn't take four, so there's one down. Yeah. It's like the Titanic all over again. Why does it not have enough shuttles? Fifi, you've made a great point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's not good. No. There is an explanation for this, you know. Why is he happy? <laughs> <laughs> I want to bear your mouth kind of explanation. <laughs> Their lives are forfeit in favor of this specimen. He knew this whole time. Yep. Ash, open the door. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, for real. Incredibly strong, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is pretty strong. Jesus. Couldn't find a better way to kill her? He's trying to shut it down. Her throat. Oh. Yeah, he is strong. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. So bad. Get her out. I tried to tell you, Fifi, in the second half it goes bonkers. <laughs> That's absolutely crazy. Yep. It's a robot. She's a goddamn robot. Get away from it. <laughs> Dropping its fettuccine Alfredo all over him. What, what, what is that fluid? Probably likes... I don't know. <laughs> It probably is Alfredo, for all I know. <laughs> I feel like he's loaded with fiber optics and everything. Parker, will you plug it in? I don't know why. Because he may know how to kill it. He's just your headless guy that you bring around <laughs> everywhere. Which way? <laughs> Ash, can you hear me? Ash! Mm. What was your special order? Bring back life form. All other priorities were submit. What about our lives, you son of a bitch? I repeat, all other priorities are submit. How do we kill it, Ash? You can't. You do, it'll just oh. destroy the whole. You still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? Perfect organism. I can't lie to you about your choices. You have my sympathies. We're gonna blow up the ship. We'll take our chances in the shuttle. Damn right, screw the company. We're out of here. Probably ten months you can make it. Bring some bring some more cereal.
I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You two go down, get all the coolant you can carry. I'll get the shuttle ready. Come back up here, I'll shut the switches off and we'll blow this fucker off into space. Why don't we all just go do things together? That would be safer. Little kitty is <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he wants to leave too. Cat can stay. Well, like, cat shouldn't have run off. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Fine. Cat lives matter too. Let's get on the intercom. And say, Jones, report to the show. She's such a smart character. Why would they have her do this? Uh... She cares more about the cat than those two. <laughs> <laughs> Jones, I'm damn it. She Why got. was he so easy to grab this time? <laughs> he wanted to be caught that time. <laughs> uh -uh. You're making so much noise. <laughs> That's a shadow right there. Where's the weapon? You can't use it with her behind it. <laughs> Get out of the way, Lavis! Get on the floor or something. Getting on the floor would be better than doing nothing. Yeah, it was a dumb idea. I don't know, I think drools a lot, doesn't it? Sure does. Get You just heard her die. Yeah, they left how that happened up to your imagination. Mm. A lot more light on this ship. That's a good point. You should have brought more light with you to space. It makes sense, man. You gotta. I it's guess not it something you want to like be able to do. That yeah. You press, but like, also, if it is an emergency, you're just like, <laughs> like. The emergency destruct system is now activated. I hope the alien doesn't understand English, otherwise, it knows the ship's gonna blow up. Man, that is dark. <laughs> Someone's alive. Uh oh. Oh my god. Dallas. Brett. Mm. A lot of stick up there. Technically, don't have to. I said it's a little well. bad yeah. in a few minutes. <laughs> Few seconds less of suffering, you know. <laughs> it's your wasting precious time. Remember when I met him? That's Tom. That's Tom Skerritt, by the way. That, that was Captain Dallas. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask him a question about that when he was signing, mm -hmm. and he said, "Man, that was 40 years ago." <laughs> Minus three minutes. Mm. Kind of there. Light him up. The weapons for it. Actually... Oh, she left the cat. Uh, would it actually be? Oh, he's like, would I hate cats. Be... <laughs> Wait, would the flamethrower actually be that effective? We'll talk about that in the afterthoughts. <laughs> at this point, saving us the time would help. What are you trying to do? Turn it off? Oh, she's trying to make it go faster. Oh, maybe she is trying to turn it off. Oh, is it because she couldn't make it to the ship? The ship will automatically destruct in five minutes. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. She was trying to stop, but she's too late. Man, 
the environment here. Yeah. I would be so overstimulated. Flashing lights and all the family. The ridiculous stress that she must be going yeah. through right now. Well, he's not there anymore. Jones. Oh, thank God. That's a pretty dirty uh, container there. Thank God for that. <laughs> The one thing they don't write in the ship. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> that cat is not. <laughs> yeah, the cat will be fine. You want to live, you're going to put up with some shit today. <laughs> T minus 30 seconds. 25, 24, 11, 10 seconds. You are isolated now. 3, 2, 1. That thing is powerful. You have a nuke on that thing? Yeah. Secondary explosion, does it have a third one in it? Yep. <laughs> okay, well, let's go. That, that was an even bigger one. Watch it beat this thing. Nonsense. <laughs> I got you. Well. I'm glad that's settled. Oh, they only have one. <laughs> it's a terrible escape shuttle. Get in there and get a nap. Wait, we're using it for the cat? For now, I just, she, she looks like she needs some time alone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's right there in front of her? Yeah. like a turd that won't flush, you know? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he just won't die. Well, I guess it makes sense. Like, it wasn't in the hallway where she last saw it, so... And the door was open to the ship, so... <laughs> she didn't have very many options, you know? Yeah. He doesn't appear to want any beef right now. I say he's awfully slow. Just yawning, that's all. <laughs> It's, it's kind of <laughs> kind of unsettling though. Yeah, this thing does not look cute when it sleeps. No. That's all you've got. You. Oh. You. Trying to flush the damn thing out. Well, it worked. What do you do now? <laughs> Stuck at the Come on. <laughs> Wait, what the heck? Oh my god. <laughs> Here you go. Fire the Chris. Fire the engines up. There's options. He can fry or he can just get lost in the vacuum of space. I like how it had a triple shot of it getting like out of the Yeah. This is Ripley, last survivor of the Nostromo, signing off. There it is, Fifi. Your first time watching Alien. That's cool. I really enjoyed that. It was really good. Yeah. Never gets old. Mm -hmm. As I said before, uh, all the uh, the aliens design and like a lot of the uh, gooey things it leaves on the walls, those are all designs from an artist called H.R. Giger, or Geiger, one of those two. I'm not sure if it's which way it's pronounced. I think it's Geiger, but I could be wrong. Okay. He's got a lot of crazy brutality style of art artistry there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is like a human face with that elongated head. In this case, they've gone and made it a, a monstrous face, mm -hmm. so it's kind of cool. His artwork is very unique. Very unique. Celebrated even today. Mm -hmm. And it's still used as the inspiration of anything alien-esque made today in, in this universe. Mm -hmm. It's a couple of things I want to draw on. So yeah, that was Ash. Mm -hmm. Ash, played by Ian Holm there, mm -hmm. is indeed an android. You don't know that at the beginning, and he didn't give you very many clues right. to lead to it. but. 
the more you watch the movie, the more you actually pick up on it. Mm -hmm. Like when Ripley's sitting there talking to him saying, what have you and mother cooked up? Mm -hmm. He says, no, nah, we're still collating. Mm -hmm. Like we're still both sinking, you mm -hmm. know? Is one of the little clues I pick up there. That was one of the things there, but it almost seems like part of the crew knew and part of the crew didn't know. Like it seems like the two flight officers probably knew that he was an android, mm -hmm. while everybody like Parker and Brett or whatever probably had no clue. Right. What he was. You'd expect probably, Dallas to know that. You would expect that, yeah. And it makes sense that he'd be the flight, that he would be the science officer in that case. But they intentionally, I think, hide it that he's an android by like having him like be in the sleeping pods with everybody, mm -hmm. you know, going to bed like that. Because otherwise, what would be the point? You're an android. You just stay out. It's interesting like that. But there's more things I have. I do want to hear, however, your thoughts here. I, I want to say that the, the plot, I was really into it, like I really wanted to know how Ripley like, was able to escape and survive, and I just really loved like the, the settings, and even though I hated some of the characters at points, um, you know, they were all human and they all made mistakes. I mean, there wouldn't really be a horror movie without people making mistakes, right? No, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, it wasn't so much a mistake as in they were just actually told to do it. Right. So yeah, um, I I really enjoyed this. I know there's like several, there's like sequels, right? There's a lot. Yes, there's a yeah. lot. And uh, there's actually more than just sequels. There's mm -hmm. an entire world of lore mm -hmm. involved in this. I actually have several comic books that I just acquired mm -hmm. from uh, from one of our fan expos. And those stories are even darker than anything in the movies. Mm -hmm. like they're even more horrific. You know, the aliens themselves, they actually take on very much of a, uh, colon like a colonist mindset. They colonize by extermination is right. the way i would say it mm -hmm. you know and their whole species is built upon reproduction so right and like they get to a planet they exterminate the existing life there and then take it over and then move on to the next planet they exterminate by reproducing and you saw mm -hmm. how they reproduce right right yeah that's that's a big deal about how to do that but it's mm -hmm. also i say hive mentality because well you saw the eggs they're a lot like insects in the way that they operate yes and yeah. Definitely, when you see the second one, you'll understand that a little bit more because they they get a little bit more in depth into like how they how they reproduce and everything. But basically, the idea is that you know they go out there, they they use humans for food and also to help reproduce. And I had a theory actually because about that scene I told you that wasn't in the theatrical version because you saw Dallas and uh, what looked like Brett I think mm -hmm. up there in the walls. There's no need to put Brett up on that wall if all you're doing is waiting to make him make him a reproduction thing because you know, you need to be alive for that thing to. To like to, to grow, in, grow you. in you, yes. Mm -hmm. My theory is that they they can reproduce in more than one way. My theory is that part of their genetics and fam, you can correct me if I'm wrong about this. I think part of part of my part of my theory is that part of their genetics allows them to mutate whatever they take into one of their eggs, mm -hmm. because that looked like what he was transforming into there mm -hmm. it was an egg. It looked like whatever DNA he was saliva up against the wall with would either either if it's like if it's just short term it'll just hold you to the wall so you can't resist right otherwise long term it probably slowly turns you into an egg and then just kind of starts to go through its evolution is what i think mm -hmm. well if the perfect beings like ash said they were then yeah they should have some means of reproducing in any environment yes right. yeah. That would make it that would make sense because you know the life that lives on a specific planet is like adapted to living on that specific planet so it would make sense that you know they would evolve depending on what planet they land on kind of makes you wonder where'd all those damn eggs come from right mm -hmm. because uh eggs are typically laid mm -hmm. um, what about that thing that they found that i said looked like a cockroach you know what i'm talking about you're talking about the big alien creature yeah. like just the bones yeah so that actually is what the creature looks like in the comics. Mm -hmm. However, there's another movie that'll explain, there's a movie further down the road in the series mm -hmm. that'll explain kind of what this is, and it's more of a prequel than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see that exact thing in a movie called Alien Prometheus. Which, no, it's just called Prometheus, it's not Alien. Oh, I'm sorry, just Prometheus, yeah, you're oh, right. Oh, I think I've heard of that movie, and I think I've always heard of people being like, I didn't know Prometheus was an alien movie, or something like that. I knew that before it ever came out, mm -hmm. because I saw the ship in the... Oh, I in see. It. And when you watch the show, you'll find out pretty quickly, too, because you'll hear the same music from this in mm -hmm. Prometheus. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I'm not going to spoil that for you at all, Fifi, because that's an entire <laughs> story to tell. Right, right. Something I wanted to talk about was that was that dinner scene. 
the chest bursting scene. Yes. Yeah. One thing I do know from having seen uh, some interviews and whatnot, that Ridley Scott didn't tell the, any of those guys what was about to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Kane knew mm -hmm. what was going to happen, but he left it a surprise for the entire crew there. So that when that actually happened, he said, "Guys, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen here, but I need you to go with it because I want to catch your exact. I want to catch you how this how this hits you. You know? Wow. Ooh, that's actually really interesting. Yeah. So you were seeing their uh -huh. genuine reactions. That's so cool, and it makes sense. You know, sometimes it is difficult to get like real shock and upset from people, even like really experienced actors. Yeah. But. I mean, that's pretty crazy. It must right. have been so crazy to experience that. Like well, Alfred, first... Alfred Hitchcock did something similar, too. Like mm -hmm. on the birds, he would actually throw birds at the actors and make them mm -hmm. respond to it. Alfred Hitchcock <laughs> is nuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that was one of the coolest things there. But their use of miniatures to make mm -hmm. things look bigger than they are was spot on. You know, yeah. they, like they built an entire uh, environment here. Yeah, I love the whole set work on the ship. Granted, it's not very practical. Like we said multiple times, they really need more lighting in there. But it looks cool. Mm -hmm. It looks very industrial. It looks like a ship that you would use for transporting ore from place to place. Right, right. What do, you, what do you think scared you more? Was it the fact that there was an alien on the ship, or was it, or was it the fact that you could you didn't know where it was? Um. Take it. Take into effect all those establishing shots throughout the entire movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there were definitely those shots. You know, they gave you sort of this feeling of like just being alone. You know, and it's space, so everything is dark. Um, it definitely was a lot of the time why I was so glued to the screen was just like not knowing where the alien was going to come out of from, you know? Mm -hmm. And we didn't even really see that much other than like the chest burster scene, like when the alien is like, you know, mm -hmm. grown or whatever and is like attacking like everybody you know you don't really see what happens to them right right like you don't see them get torn apart or whatever the movie the movie leaves a lot to your imagination yeah it, it does leave a lot to your imagination and I, I like that I like that too I like that the most graphic scene was the chest bursting scene and, and you know the rest of it is just for us to imagine basically. yeah because yeah, the chest burster is shocking you don't expect that to happen in the moment whereas yeah. you expect people are gonna start dying after that point but you don't know when or how Right. Right. Like it bothered me what happened to uh what happened to Lambert there, cause she, the 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 other female on the ship, mm -hmm. because like you saw the tail coming up behind her mm -hmm. and over, and then the last thing you you don't see her again. All you hear is her screams, mm -hmm. and you can tell it's brutal. Mm -hmm. Right. Whatever's right. happening, but it's like sheer terror. I right. thought it was like the use of sound or even the absence of it mm -hmm. just gets you in every sing every single way here. Sometimes your imagination is worse than what you can actually show on there. Yeah, that's, that's true. Hang on, guys. I want to get to a scene because uh, I think y'all missed. I think you guys never saw this part. Right there. Oh, I see him. Yeah, I see him now. Like a spider. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. So interesting the way they had it. I know there must have been a person in that suit. No, that was definitely. Oh, yeah. There was absolutely a person in that suit. Yeah. And, they, and uh, one of the things I remember uh, Tom Skerritt saying was like because this guy was in this suit all the time and Tom Skerritt was actually really pissed at the director because he's constantly having to stand in it mm -hmm. and he's like man can we get this guy a chair or something you know yeah so yeah because he's like this is ridiculous he's standing on his feet for eight hours straight yeah that is pretty crazy but he's a tall skinny dude who's mm -hmm. in that suit you don't know his name I don't know his name but I do know he's a ballet dancer mm. oh yeah I guess that would make it a little bit easier to stand on your feet like that he would have to stand on his feet or he'd have to be constantly in the squat position or something. Yeah. Or he'd have to be hanging from something. So they, you know, I think they used whatever, <laughs> whatever they had at their, at their, uh, at their disposal there. He yeah. couldn't just like lie, I guess he couldn't lie down either because that thing is like, it's like. Yeah, yeah, you it's, know it's, what I mean? it's very unwieldy the way it's yeah. designed. It's kind of, it's kind of the brilliance though of Geiger's design there is, it just blends into the environment. You don't notice it unless you're actually looking for that design. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Fifi, the, I wanted you to watch this movie, obviously because I, you need to have the experience in your life at mm -hmm. least once. Uh, now that we've introduced you to a, uh, what I don't know what we call this, a trilogy or just a, a whole group of movies. Just a franchise. A franchise. There we, that's the word. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, now that we've introduced you, there's no stopping. Uh, there's only moving on to the next, and I've got all the director's cuts. So. Dang. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, the next time you're ready for another alien, mm -hmm. we're going to watch the best one. 
the best, the second one? Well, or? you know what? These, are, the first three movies are incredible, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The first one is the best one in terms of horror movies. Mm -hmm. The second one is the best one in terms of being an action movie with horror elements blended into it. Okay, interesting. In my opinion. The third one goes back to the horror elements thing. Mm -hmm. And it's still really good, but I think you can make an argument that people are going to have their opinions. In my opinion, the second one's the best one. That's the one I saw first. Okay. I Dan, what do you think? I kind of have to go with the original, I think. Okay. I mean, granted, the second one as a movie is a little bit different. Like you said, it's more action-y. So it, it's not a bad film. It's just a slightly different experience from this. Right. But you still get Ripley. Mm -hmm. And it's still the aliens. And you'll get a lot more aliens in the next one. Mm -hmm. um, so my friend was telling me about... Uh, the newest movie that came out, I always forget the name. He saw it. Romulus, I think? Romulus? Yes, that's the one that just came out. Uh-huh. I heard that one is set, like... Immediately after immediately this. Immediately after this, but, like, isn't... It doesn't have any... Like, it doesn't have Ripley in it, does it? No, no, no. It had none of the actors from this, at least not mm -hmm. really. But it, it's pretty much like a direct sequel to this, because the events here have an influence on what happens in Romulus. Mm. I think the term for the movie is called an inner quell. So, like, it happens in this in between two timelines there. But the thing with Romulus, too, though, is there's references to a lot of different shows. So, like, there's references in there to the second one, there's references in there to Prometheus. Mm -hmm. Like, really, you have to have seen the others to fully understand everything going on in Romulus. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't go watch it yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You've got a great start here. This will get you. This will get you a good foundation. Okay. You've definitely seen the, uh, you know, the good scare here. Mm -hmm. You know what the uh, the slogan of this movie is? Mm -hmm. In space, no one can hear you scream. That's a, I've definitely heard that slogan before. Where this came from. That's pretty cool. But inside a ship, we'll hear you scream. Yes. <laughs> um, about the face hugger thing. Oh yeah, um, we didn't talk about that. I feel like I've seen that in a in a horror space game. I think it was called like Dead Space or something. I want to say it was Dead Space. It probably had something similar, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. They wasn't the same thing, but it was definitely. You can tell they took. Uh, Obviously, it's influenced or oh yeah, or inspired or whatever. Fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the thing about uh, horror and sci-fi horror is that they're all influenced by mm -hmm. each other. You know, it's like they all take inspiration. Right. And I think that's awesome. I've heard Dead Space is a really good game. Mm -hmm. That face hugger, it's like that's your introduction to the alien. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's like one of the craziest scenes because it look it doesn't look like it was made in the seventies. Right. You know, it, whole... it really it really doesn't. I mean, there are some little spots here and there, but for the most part, it's a pretty solid movie. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The amount of detail they put into that face hug into the aliens just really, really top notch. Mm -hmm. yeah, the first time you see and it like its tail is just constricting around his neck. Mm -hmm. it's like, that was. It looks yeah, like a living easy. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it the, it goes to show how when you do practical effects like really, really well, then it holds up to today's like CGI and things like that, and it looks even better, honestly. Than... The CG will get yeah. worse over time because it will never improve. But yeah, practical effects real is real no matter what age it is. Right. Absolutely. Right. And it's not like a huge thing either. It's just a little face hug, you know. So it's like you can put components in it that make it go, that make it turn, or you can make it look like it's turning, you know. So I wish they would just do that more. But man, they, they don't. That just goes to show they don't make movies like they used to. Mm -hmm. All in all, uh, I hope you enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Yeah, it was really, really good. Cool. Mm -hmm. Never gets old. It still, uh, it still gets me in, in my nerves sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Good horror. Oh yeah. Fam, I know we can talk about this a lot more, but uh, you know, we're going to have to save this because if we keep talking, we're going to start spoiling other movies. I was say, this is so much we could get into yeah. with the connection with the other films. But <laughs> I'm sure there are other things I could talk about about this movie, but uh, you got to talk about something too. And we want to hear from you guys, okay? Uh, I want to hear what you know about this movie, similar to how you've helped us out with other horror movies like The Exorcist. You've really changed my perspective on that movie altogether, so see if you can do it again with this one, guys. Uh, but as always, if this is your first time with us, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And I'm Fifi. And that's Fifi. <laughs> and we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan and Fifi. Cheers to you. Later, guys.